Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Claudio Geller. I'm from uh, ETH uh, Switzerland. Uh, and uh, well, yeah, today I want to talk about uh, yeah, cosmology on, on the GPU. Actually, it's a very ambitious title because cosmology is, uh, of course, a huge subject. So what I want to do is just to, uh, to tell you about uh, a couple of experiences that I'm doing and currently uh, doing in uh, Mm, developing, uh, in testing, and porting uh, a couple of different codes uh, uh, related to cosmology, used in cosmology, to the uh, accelerator. So just uh, as a very, uh, I forgot, just as a very uh, general, let me try to start this. OK, just a uh, uh, very, very general introduction. We can say, of course, that in cosmology, but in general in astrophysics, uh, numerical simulations, uh, are, uh, represent a, a fundamental, a basic tool, especially because, of course, in astronomy we cannot do uh, numeric, we cannot do uh, experiments, re real experiments, like uh, in other fields of physics uh, and science. So the only way to uh, to confirm, to analyze, to check the theory is uh, uh, with uh, uh, with numerical uh, uh, simulations. You cannot, uh, of course. Uh, uh, reproduce uh, the evolution of, ga of a galaxy in a uh, in, labora in laboratory or a, a star of the of the whole universe uh, with uh, uh, with an, an experiment. So what you need uh, is uh, sophisticated simulation codes uh, with a lot of physics inside, and of course, when you have created the data, you need uh, uh, data processing, analysis, uh, and visualization tools to look at this data. In this case, what you see here is the result of a huge cosmological simulation. It's an embodied simulation um, made of uh, uh, about 10 billion uh, particles, so fluid elements uh, that are followed, that, uh, whose uh, dynamics uh, is uh, simulated from the, let's say, from the Big Bang, from the very first uh, instance after the Big Bang to the current time. And this is. Uh, uh, a very large scale simulation. This is a re representative fraction of the universe. So you can imagine the the the, the difficult, the, the the challenging, the, the challenges that, that are behind uh, this uh, simulation, but also the challenges that are behind uh, the uh, visualization of, co uh, uh, for example, of uh, uh, such a huge data distribution. So what we need is both. Uh, both uh, uh, yeah, good tools uh, to perform the simulation, but also very good tools uh, to process the data that are coming from the simulation. And in order to do that, of course, uh, we need uh, uh, computing power. And so we need to exploit uh, high-end HPC architectures with all their uh, most, uh, uh, with all the, the, the ultimate devices uh, that are proposed by technology. And why not, of course, uh, uh, GPUs and more generally speaking, uh, um, accelerator. So the question that we uh, we were trying to 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 answer and uh, we are trying to explore is uh, uh, can this application, this uh, astrophysics or cosmology related application, can they efficiently exploit uh, uh, the GPUs? Uh, and uh, if so, if the if at least they can run on a GPU. What kind of performance we can get out of this uh, uh, of these codes? So uh, I personally investigated uh, three different cases. So three different codes: uh, Ramses, uh, that is a cosmological simulation code; Splotch, uh, that is uh, a visualization software; and uh, also Enzo, that is uh, another cosmological simulation tool. I will not talk in this uh, in this talk about Enzo because it's a subject uh, of the next talk so you will have many more details about that in the next uh, from the next uh, speaker and uh, we have developed uh, everything and tested and benchmarked everything on our uh, Cray X uh, our CSCS uh, uh, Cray XK7 uh, uh, system that is uh, and you can see here well you can see here the characteristics of this uh, of this machine the computing uh, um, the computing node uh, is uh, schematically represented here. We have uh, an AMD uh, 16 cores uh, uh, CPU from one side uh, and a Kepler K20X uh, uh, GPU on the other on the other side. And this uh, 
uh, and we have, uh, I don't remember exactly, uh, 272 nodes uh, like, uh, uh, like this uh, connected uh, by a Gemini uh, network, a Gemini uh, interconnect. But probably you know all the details, uh, you, you know very well all the details of this kind of uh, uh, architecture. So I want to move uh, directly to the, to the codes uh, that are under investigation. The first code is uh, this cosmological simulation code, uh, RAMSIS. So this is uh, a uh, three-dimensional uh, Eulerian uh, code to describe the evolution uh, of the uh, cosmological structures, not only the cosmological structures, but also on smaller scales of galaxies and even on the scales, it can be used on the scales of uh, star-forming regions and even for uh, the formation of planetary, uh, of planetary structure. In fact, uh, in this code, we have, well, the, the, the basic component of this code are the dark matter algorithm, the, the, the embodied algorithm that is used to uh, evolve, to describe the behavior of the uh, dark matter component. The um, number, a few hydrodynamic solver uh, based on different numerical approaches, uh, to describe the evolution of uh, what we, well, of the baryonic matter of, or what is uh, usually called the gas inside the, the simulation. And then there is a, Poiss a Poisson solver based on, a, uh, built on, on a multigrid uh, technique that uh, is used to, to calculate the gravitational field uh, cal uh, coming from the uh, coupled distribution of matter of, uh, uh, of dark matter and baryonic uh, matter. This is the, the, these are the basic components of RAMSIS, but it's not, uh, uh, it's not only this. Uh, we have a number of other um, additional physics packages, like, for example, that can, allows you to include uh, magneto hydrodynamic so, uh, electromagnetic fields. Uh, uh, various kind of uh, cooling, uh, radiative transfer, uh, ionization of different species. Uh, you can, uh, in some sense, uh, describe star formation and its feedback uh, on the uh, matter that is uh, distributed in the, in the simulation. The code is an Eulerian code and uh, uh, based, oh, sorry, based, I have not the laser, on this uh, ad adaptive mesh refinement uh, uh, approach that uh, allows you to refine uh, the special, the spatial resolution of your simulation only where it is actually needed. So you see a very coarse uh, grid here, while here you have a very refined uh, structure. Differently from other codes that, are, that you can find, uh, uh, let's say, in the market, uh, RAMSIS uh, uh, is uh, a fully threaded tree uh, for the management uh, of this uh, AMR uh, mesh. This means that uh, uh, the refinement is completely, let's say, free. So you can refine exactly, you can follow uh, exactly the, the, the details uh, of the physics of your problem and refine only where it is uh, strictly necessary. So you don't have to define rectangular patch patches in order to simply... And, and refine these patches, but uh, you can refine on a cell-by-cell -cell basis. Uh, this is uh, very good from a certain point of view, but it's uh, really nasty from the point of view of the, uh, of the management, of the memory management, because you see that uh, you can probably uh, perceive from this picture that uh, you have a sort of a linked list. Instead of having a regular array in memory, you have sort of linked list, a little more complex than, than a linked list, so even more difficult, that, of course, are not very efficient in terms of memory management. And then we will see uh, this in a second in the, in, the next, uh, in the next slides. So there are various attempts to move RAMSYS on the GPU or parts of RAMSYS on the GPU. Um, there is a first uh, experience uh, made by French people of SIA uh, that uh, was the porting of the, uh, well, of the hydro solver using CUDA, or the, the full hydro solver using CUDA uh, on the GPU, uh, but uh, switching off, let's say, the, uh, the adaptive mesh refinement so they can solve AMR on a regular 
uh, homogeneous uh, uh, mesh. Uh, this uh, proved to, to give uh, very good results, uh, and the speed up that you can obtain uh, on, the, on the GPU is very good. Then there is a second experience I will uh, tell you uh, a little more in the next slide, that is uh, a specific component, uh, one of these uh, peculiar component of Ramses that allows you to solve the radiative transfer and the uh, ionization of the different species, the different uh, uh, atoms that are present in the simulation. Uh, also, this has, has been implemented successfully with CUDA uh, by, uh, by people in, in France, again, of CIA. And finally, this is my personal atten attempt that is not working, is the only one that is not working. And uh, it's based on OpenACC and it's the, in the, the implementation of the full hydro solver, so with the AMR, and that's the tricky part, um, yeah, using uh, this uh, OpenACC-based uh, approach. So let me spend you uh, just uh, a, a couple of words on this uh, Atom module. The Atom module allows you, well, um, it just uh, takes uh, the, the hydrodynamical quantities at the beginning of the time step, uh, and uh, it calculates the chemistry, the cooling uh, of, uh, of, this, uh, uh, of the matter that, is, uh, that has been calculated by the, main, uh, by the main code. It's interesting, this module is interesting because it's completely, let's say, decoupled from the rest of the code. So while the rest of the code can evolve uh, the matter from uh, the, the, the initial time step, well, from the beginning of the time step to the end of the time step, this uh, atom module, uh, this, uh, uh, this other module, can calculate a complementary, let's say, physics uh, in parallel. So you can, in principle, you can run uh, the dynamics uh, of the problem uh, on the CPU, uh, on your CPU, and the uh, uh, radiative transfer and ionization problem at the same time on the GPU. So you, you, you already have a big uh, uh, advantage in doing this, but there is even more because when moved uh, on, the, on the GPU and the properly uh, implemented, this Atom module, mm, you can get on the, this uh, Atom module uh, a, a speed up that is really amazing. It's more than 100 times faster than uh, on a single core and let's say uh, 20 times, uh, um, 10, yeah, 10 times faster, I'm sorry. Uh, with respect to the 16 cores uh, of our, uh, of our uh, uh, CPU. So this is really an extraordinary speed up uh, and it's a very uh, successful uh, uh, result uh, that was obtained uh, for uh, Ramses. Then uh, there is the second point, the, 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 the second uh, uh, attempt uh, that is uh, the, the porting, uh, the, the, the implementation of the full hydrodynamic module, so the full hydrodynamic kernel with AMR, uh, mm, the, 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 the porting to the GPU using uh, OpenACC. Uh, we tried uh, with a very first, uh, in a, in, with a very first uh, attempt, uh, with a first approach uh, that, is, uh, that you can see here. So you have uh, this in blue, you have the hydro variables. Uh, in red, uh, you have the gravitational field uh, that you need uh, to uh, integrate uh, the hydrodynamics equation uh, that you want to solve uh, on the GPU. So the first idea, the most the simplest idea, was to move uh, everything to the GPU. So hydrodynamics, uh, and I forgot to put also the, the, um, uh, the gravitational field, and then uh, to solve uh, the hydrodynamic e equation on the GPU. So when you want to solve uh, the problem on a cell, you have to collect uh, all the data from the neighbors, and you have to build uh, these, um, these uh, small patches, and you, ha you, you send it uh, to, the, to, the, to, to, a, to a thread, and you uh, ask the thread to integrate uh, the equation. Then when it's done, you move back to the result, and when you did that for all the, for all the uh, cells, of course, you move everything back to the CPU. You see that, uh, you immediately see here that the tricky part here is that uh, in order to build uh, this patch, you have to collect, uh, due to this uh, uh, fully threaded uh, AMR structure, uh, you have to collect uh, data that are spread randomly, let's say, in the memory, uh, that are spread, uh, in, uh, yeah, let's say, r randomly in, uh, in memory. And so this is uh, a very inefficient memory uh, kind of, uh, of uh, memory uh, access. And in fact, uh, 
uh, even if we try to do everything to uh, improve the performance and to optimize our algorithm, finally, the speed up compared not to the CPU, be careful, this is compared to the single core, it's really poor. So we found that uh, in the best uh, configuration, so these are different tests using different configuration parameter of RAMSYS, you have that the best configuration, in the best configuration you get a factor, a speed up of a factor of 3.3 that is really uh, poor. So we investigated what was the, the, the origin of this problem. There are various problems. Mm, the first one, of course, again, is the data structure and the irregular data distribution. Then you have also the amount of transfer data because you transfer all the data uh, to the GPU and uh, all the result to back to the CPU. So for, the, for this test uh, that I presented, that I'm presenting here, we have about 20 gigabytes of data that are transferred in and out uh, uh, the, the, the GPU. And so we have uh, an overhead, this is in second, uh, about 10 seconds of overhead that cannot be reduced uh, by a synchronous operation because this was not uh, permitted by the, the, the way the algorithm uh, has uh, been implemented. And the further problem is that we have a quite low flop, flop per byte ratio. But this is, uh, of course, intrinsic to the problem. It's intrinsic uh, to the algorithm. So we tried to do, we are trying actually, because this second attempt uh, is ongoing, we tried uh, a different approach. So we are trying to reconstruct the regular patches on the CPU bef before sending them to the GPU. So we are trying to, to at, a, at a given level of, of refinement, we are trying to build uh, these uh, big regular rec rectangular patches to send them to the uh, GPU. The GPU solves the problem and then send back uh, the patch to the, um, to the uh, CPU. So what are the pluses uh, of the previous uh, implementation? Well, of course, at this point, uh, we have, oh, no. We have a, a regular data distribution because we have re rectangular patches. But first of all, these two things, uh, we can overlap uh, data transfer and computing because uh, uh, you can send a patch and then start uh, building the next patch on the CPU while uh, the previous patch is being integrated by the GPU. And then you can, while uh, it is sent back, you send a new patch to the GPU and, uh, and, uh, uh, and so on. So this kind of overlap, uh, uh, should, uh, should improve the performance. Of course, I, I've not actually, for, uh, for this kind, uh, for this implementation, I've not results yet because uh, it's, uh, it's uh, still, uh, uh, it's still uh, yeah, ongoing. Uh, and, but we expect uh, to improve the performance. Of course, we improve the performance on the GPU, but we have to be careful to the cost of in inserting, of implementing uh, this new feature. So this uh, building of uh, patches. Uh, so this is something that you have always to be careful. The price that you pay for the implementation, for the uh, refactoring of your code uh, to make it su suitable for the GPU. And we will see another example like this uh, in, uh, in a minute. Uh, because the second code that I want to speak to you about is uh, this uh, splotch code that use, uh, is used to visualize a huge uh, uh, data sets. Uh, it's a sort of a ray tracing algorithm. You just solve the radiative transfer equation. Well, we set the, the point of view, the camera position, and when we, we, we solve uh, the radiative transfer equation along uh, the line of sight, this is quite uh, usual. Okay, this is uh, the, the let's say the schematic, uh, the sketch of the, uh, of the structure of the code. What I want you to, uh, what I want to stress uh, well, uh, let me just uh, stress that there are these two components that are uh, what we call a rasterization. That is, an, uh, well, it's uh, an extended uh, in definition of ra rasterization where we do all the calculation on the particles for rototranslating them uh, to color them and so on. And then the real uh, volume rendering, that is the real uh, solution of the... Um, of the, of the radiative uh, uh, transfer equation. So it's where you calculate, uh, exa you, you actually calculate uh, your uh, uh, image. Everything uh, is, uh, is designed in order to be high performance. So Splotch has an MPI and OpenMP implementation and now also a CUDA implementation. And let's see what kind of uh, uh, work we had to do to, uh, to get uh, uh, this implementation. Thank you. 
So we have to offload, uh, so first of all, we, we have to offload the data in chunks uh, because you cannot, uh, uh, you can think that you have, you may have uh, uh, 10 billion or 100 billion particles to, to process, uh, so you have to uh, offload uh, in chunks uh, to move uh, data in chunks uh, to, the, to the GPU. Then we have the rasterization, and this was not a problem on the GPU because it's very data parallel, and so we have sort of one th what we call one thread per particle approach. Each thread takes a particle and, uh, and, uh, calcu and calculate the new position according to the new point of view and so on. The, the rendering stuff, and this is the tricky part. Mm, it's uh, tricky because uh, we have that particles can be distributed, let's say, randomly in the in the computational box, so you have uh, an unbalanced granularity, an unbalanced distribution of the particles, uh, so load balancing uh, is uh, quite difficult, but then the, really ni the, the, the real nightmare is, this, uh, um, is the fact that each particle can have uh, a different intrinsic radius, so the radius is the number, is the, the, the volume of space that uh, this particle affects, and uh, each particle has a different intrinsic radius to, due to the physical properties of the particle. And also this uh, radius uh, change according, changes according uh, to the camera position, becoming larger if the particle is close to the, to the observer and becoming much smaller if it is uh, very far away. So this means uh, that uh, the, the each particle affects uh, a different region of space, uh, and uh, different particles can contribute to the same pixel at the same time, so you can have uh, frequent race conditions that are unpredictable, and uh, that can uh, create a wrong uh, uh, image. Okay, you know perfectly this, uh, uh, this problem. So then, when uh, you, you uh, at the end, you can copy back the, the final image uh, to, the, uh, to the host. How did we solve uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this problem, these two uh, problems. So uh, the idea is to classify, what we, we could do is to classify particles according to their size, this radius that is the real tricky point. So we have small particles that stays, in, that lies inside a pixel, regular particles between one and a certain size, a maximum size, and the large, uh, um, and large particles. The small particles are integrated very efficiently. They just uh, contribute to one pixel, so you can imagine that they can be solved uh, quite easily. The, the medium particle, for the medium particle, we, we have implemented a tiling-based uh, schema by which we divide the image in tiles, then we sort particles per tile index so that we identify where the particles lies, and then we calculate each tile on, each tile represents a CUDA block, and each tile is solved in, by a different block with one pixel per thread approach. Then at the end we compose all the tiles to create the final uh, the final uh, image. This appropriate uh, is uh, uh, absolutely, it's uh, in extremely important for the performance because it's uh, uh, the, the factor that determines uh, the, the occupancy of the, um, of the GPU, so it's uh, extremely important uh, for the final performance. Finally, finally, we have the large particle, and for the large particle, we didn't find anything better than uh, moving back, that, that move back this particle to the CPU and let the CPU uh, cope with them in parallel with the GPU. Usually, these particles are, are few, are not so, uh, are not. Um, we have not many large particles, and so this is not a big problem. But in certain cases, as we, as we will see in the next slide, it, it can uh, be. So, okay, this is the kind of test that we did. It's, uh, this is uh, our simulation. So we, are, uh, we did, uh, for example, in this case, uh, seven tests uh, zooming in, so going closer and closer to the center of the simulation. This is a medium-sized simulation. We have uh, uh, around uh, seven, 7.5 uh, gigabyte of data when you approach uh, the, the, the center of the simulation. I don't know if it is clear from this graph, but uh, the distribution of the radii of the, the, of radii of the particles tend to be larger and larger, so you move uh, progressively toward uh, larger um, particles, and, this is, and these are uh, the results. So remember, if you remember, uh, we have the rasterization, uh, uh, the, ras the rasterization kernel and the rendering kernel. The rasterization kernel, okay, 
the rasterization kernel is very efficient, and we get a factor of uh, 50 of the speed up uh, with, uh, yeah, it's, it's the last thing, uh, a factor of 50 with respect to a single core. For the rendering, uh, you see that we can get uh, uh, a, a good factor of between 10 and 13, uh, as, as long as the particles are small. But then, uh, when you have a lot of, uh, the, here you have uh, a larger and larger number of uh, of big particles, they are moved to the CPU, and so the performance uh, tend to drop. Uh, one in interesting thing that uh, recall what I was saying for Ramses before is that uh, this, uh, these are the, rest in the original, let's say, rasterization and rendering kernels that were present all, all, already on the, on the original code. And this is the overhead of the components that we had to introduce uh, to move uh, the, the code to, ref to, to, to have the refactoring of the code on the GPU. And you can see that this overhead can be up to the 50% of the total computing time. Really, the, the final one, when you compare, so when you compare the, the, um, the, the performance to, well, different, uh, uh, well, the, 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 the blue lines are different, uh, uh, different number of processors from, uh, uh, from uh, 1 to 12 compared to the GPU. You see uh, the, the black line is the CPU, the, the GPU. You see that you can get uh, uh, a speed up of a, of a factor of eight, more or less. That is a sum of the speed ups that we see before plus the overhead that drops uh, when uh, you have big particles, of course, because uh, you are moving to the CPU. Okay, okay. I skipped the summary and. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and let's thank the speaker.